Hello, my beautiful life brides. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race, season 16, episode two, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. So without further ado, Let's get into it. Y'all, it's season 16, episode two. And if you recall, last week we had a split premiere where we got the first seven queens in the first episode. And this week we got the seven new queens. In this episode, we will be looking at the new queens. If you wanna watch the first seven queens, go ahead and click over here. It might be the other corner. I always mess this up. Even though we only have seven queens, we will be looking at both their performance attire and their runway looks. And we will be looking at them from a fashion point of view. We will not be critiquing the performances themselves, but more how the queen's looks match their performance. If you wanna see an episode on their entrance looks, I already did that episode and I will also click it right over here. I'll point to both because I don't know which corner it will actually be, but you'll see it flash. I think it's that one. On the runway, the theme is reveal yourself where the queens have to give us a reveal runway. So we got reveals on reveals on reveals and we got talent and we got a lot to get into. Seven queens, two looks each, 14 looks. Buckle up guys and let's get into it. First up, it's Geneva Carr. And for her performance outfit, Geneva Carr is coming out in this traditional Mexican garment and she is using it brilliantly to give us all of the dress sort of choreography, much more traditional in its sense. It looks like a perfectly fine outfit, but what works with this outfit is that it works with the song and the type of music she's doing. She's going for more of a traditional song and therefore she may paired it with a traditional attire. Of course, she's throwing in her little drag twist into her performance by making it a little bit comedy. But the part that's really interesting actually to me is that this ends up being a reveal. And I like this because I didn't expect this to be a reveal because it is much more of a traditional garment. I was expecting this to be it and maybe something to happen with the performance. She pulls up her garment and she gives us the whole bodysuit fantasy. Now with a bodysuit, it could go either way. Normally you would say a bodysuit is just a bodysuit, but a bodysuit as a performance outfit is a really good choice. There is a reason why so many queens use them. They're easy to move in, they're easy to flex in, they're easy to, you know, perform in. I mean, they are performance attires, but when you do a bodysuit for RuPaul's Drag Race main stage, it's gotta feel elevated. And Geneva Carr did that. Hers felt elevated. Yes, you could probably see a really good queen wear something like this in bars, but it isn't your stereotypical AliExpress outfit. And that is what I'm looking for on this stage. She looks good doing it. So all in all for Geneva Carr, it is definitely gonna be a bow for me. On the runway, Geneva Carr is giving you mariachi. She is definitely saying, I am Mexican and I am here to stay. The Mexican mariachi look was very well put together. It was giving you a little bit of that drag fantasy. The whole thing was done in a sequin material and she looks sort of like very regal. I wish that the actual mariachi jacket sort of thing had more like buckles and things on it that stuck out because it felt very flat. But we find out there's a reason for that because she pulls it off to reveal to this big, beautiful dress. And the best part about it is that the jacket becomes a dress and there is not a single thing left on the floor. It is all built in together. On top of it, it is going from small silhouette to big silhouette. Most people go and take something big and then hide something little underneath it. You know, this was going the opposite way around and it was definitely giving you unexpected. On top of it, she's got a theme of like this Mexican fantasy where it goes from male to female and giving you both sides of the equation. All in all, I feel like there was some little details that could have been added to 
oomph it up a little bit more but because it was so well done and so well made and so well thought through i have no choice but to give her a fab next up it's hershey liqueur jeté and hershey liqueur jeté is coming out in this jungle safari-esque outfit she's got the whole jungle on the stage and she is dressed as the safari woman now i will say that the staging and the costume work perfectly together you could see that that was thought through as a vision now to the part where i'm a little bit lost what does this stage or this outfit have to do with this song it is so random so left field and i just don't get it for me a stage outfit really needs to elevate the performance and this one left me questioning what was going on yes it is cool yes it is stupid but like is it stupid in the good way she's talking about whiplash and all of these things i wish she would have had like a garment made out of hair to be honest i think like she could have done more and also if you look at the outfit itself it's pretty basic there's nothing really special about it so like if you weren't gonna match it it better be the best freaking outfit in the world and this is not all in all, I don't get it. Fun performance, but don't get what the outfit has to do with it. So for Hershey Lacour Jeté's performance outfit, I have to go with a draft. And on the runway, Hershey Lacour Jeté is coming out in this big poofy jacket. And you know there is something that is gonna be coming out of there because it is so big, so over the top. It is your classic drag, let's pull off a jacket and reveal to something else. She pulls off her jacket, she reveals to this like brown leathery garment, which actually kind of looks kind of cool. But then nothing else happens and this is where you lose me. The theme of the runway is reveals. Taking a jacket off is not a reveal. And she is so covered from head to toe that I expected another outfit, especially on the runway coming straight after Nymphia Wind who gave us three reveals and four outfits. This was basic AF. All in all, although the individual garments looked great, for a runway theme like reveal, there was no concept and there was no big reveal. So that is why I have to go with a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Plasma, and Plasma for her performance outfit is coming in in this like old Hollywood debonair look. She's got the, the microphone that kind of gives you that like jazz bar-esque fire. While she's performing, she's also giving you a little burlesque, revealing gloves, revealing moments. What I do like about the outfit is that it looks expensive and put together. It doesn't feel like it comes from AliExpress. It definitely feels like it was custom made. Now, does it work in this setting? Yeah, potentially. I mean, it is a great stage outfit of sorts. She's giving you little moments here and there, but it is nothing like va 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 voom, but her performance is very still. She's singing, she's giving a little bit of impressions, and she's giving you a little bit of burlesque. Is she doing too much? Probably, but we're drag queens, we love to do too much. Now, for the outfit, I feel like, you know, having these extra little moments does add something to the performance uh, because it is like curving left, curving right, uh, reveal here, maybe there. None of it was sort of expected and that's what I enjoy. So all in all for a performance outfit, it's fine, it's good. And for that reason, I'm gonna have to go with a bow. On the runway, Plasma is coming out and giving you pin cushion. To be honest, I had no idea what she was originally. I thought she was giving you like a Kusama sort of fantasy with the polka dots and this sort of like pumpkin shape. But no, she is a tomato pin cushion. And once she said it, it made sense to me. But you can see that she thought about the detail. She got this big pin cushion look with pin cushions all over her hair and her hair looks excellent. Now, you knew this was gonna be a reveal because it is so big and over the top. It wasn't really like giving, it was kind of expected that she was gonna reveal. You knew that it was gonna be a reveal and I like when reveals are unexpected and this one was definitely expected. That being said, she takes off the pin cushion and what I do like about it is the way she took it off. Usually these are sort of like tearaways, but this was actually like kind of a jacket, which I thought was like, hmm, well made. It looks very expensive, very put together and continues that pin cushion idea. 
Now, if it stopped there, I probably would have like maybe wrapped it, but she got one more reveal. She takes off her breast to reveal to sort of these like little nipple pasties. And I kind of love it. It gives you that third reveal that I was unexpected and all three garments look well put together. I love this because that third one was unexpected, which is what I want. On top of it, with a runway like called Reveals, it's good when you give me a reveal on reveal. She gave me two reveals, three garments, and, and she gave me a concept altogether of this pinwheel. All in all, it looks cool, it looks all put together, it looks expensive, and that is why for Plasma's runway outfit, I have to go with a bow. Next up, it's Nymphium Wind. And Nymphium Wind for her performance outfit is coming in in this traditional Taiwanese attire. She has her face hidden to reveal this gorgeous conceptual makeup. The whole performance in itself looked really regal, elegant, and makes you appreciate the art. Even though I do not know much about this culture, I feel intrigued. I definitely feel that the attire really helped elevate the whole performance. I mean, if she did this in a bodysuit, it just wouldn't work. You can see that it was made for this because it's got a lot of like this sleeveography type thing happening and the paint that she did with the attire all worked from head to toe. So besides being a super beautiful performance that I would love to go watch in person, it is also fit for purpose for the stage. It looks elevated, it looks elegant, it looks put together and it looks like it was made for this performance. So it's got all of the checks of a perfect performance attire. And that is why for Nymphia Win for her performance look, it is definitely going to be a fab. On the runway, Nivea Wind is coming out in this giant green banana. Now, my initial thought immediately is this looks like a reveal. And what, what I love about a reveal is when you don't see it coming. So this was like, yeah, obviously you're gonna take it off and show off your attire. But the outside casing itself is quite beautiful. It's got a lot of details in it. It's almost got this Fabergé texture to it because it's got a lot of like lace little sort of details and crystals and things like that to make it shimmer, to make it feel a little bit special. She takes off her green banana to reveal a whole outfit made of bananas. And this outfit is quite camp and quite cute. Paired it with this big, beautiful, and expensive looking hair, uh, which has also got a banana in it. She's really giving you banana from head to toe. And honestly, that's where I thought the outfit was gonna end. And I was gonna say I was a little bit disappointed because I saw that reveal coming. But wait, she is not done. She takes off her banana dress to reveal a sort of bikini-esque banana outfit with the next stage of the banana where it started to get its little brown spots. And I was like, oh my God, love this. Three reveals and I didn't necessarily see the third one coming, which I don't know why I didn't see it coming because obviously that outfit was quite big. So she could do another one, but I loved it. And it gave you that extra moment. And then I thought we were for sure done, but nope. She's got another one. She takes off her almost kind of getting old banana to reveal a completely rotten banana. She is like fully naked with banana tassels coming off of her nipples and this like banana S skirt underneath. I love it. I didn't see this coming at all. Not only did she give us one reveal, she gave us two three reveals, that's four looks in one. On top of it, the whole thing was put together with this stupid story of a banana ripening from young banana all the way to super rotten banana. It's both conceptual, stupid, camp, and fashion. And this is a queen to watch. I loved it from head to toe, and it is a thousand percent a fab for me. Next up, it's Megami. And Megami for her performance outfit is coming in in this funeral outfit. She's wearing all black with the black veil. Um, and she is really giving you that soulful performance. She's holding the pride flag in her hand and got the little pride flag on her chest. All in all, I was waiting for something to happen. She starts off quite slow. And the whole time I was questioning, what does this 
flag have to do with anything. I was expecting it to open and something to pop up. I was expecting some sort of reveal to come turn into like a full rainbow dress. It just felt like it was too basic. This is a fine outfit, but how does it add to the performance? And the answer is it doesn't. Yes, she was trying to give you maybe that sad moment vibe, which it does, but this is RuPaul's Drag Race. This is the biggest stage in the world. This is an outfit that you could wear anywhere, not here. I need more. I need it to connect a little bit more. Even with her cards, like the cards were just sitting there the whole time and you knew something was gonna happen. I wish they would have popped out of nowhere or I wouldn't have expected them or maybe these, these cards could have been written on ribbons that she pulled out of her sleeve or something. Like just bring it to the next level. And since she didn't, for this performance outfit, I definitely have to go with a drab <laughs> On the runway, Megami is coming out in this weird, spooky sort of attire. She's got these big feathers coming out of her hair. She's got gold blood from her eyes with big black eyes. She has lace detailing all over her body, wings coming from her back, and I am excited. I was so excited for this outfit. I was waiting for somebody to give me that sort of alternative drag, and Megami was coming in with the goods. But that's where the goods stopped. I was waiting for the reveal. I was like, I don't know where this reveal is coming from. I was excited. I was like, are the wings gonna come off? Is the headpiece gonna happen? Is she gonna go from bad to good? and she did none of that. It was very much a sort of flop reveal. She just took her hands, revealed, and she had eyes painted on her hands. And I was like, girl, that is not a reveal. That is fun for a runway, but not for a reveals runway. A reveals runway, something needs to turn into something else, and, and she lost me. And it's such a shame because I really love the outfit. I really love the concept. I really love the idea. And I really loved the original outfit. I just wish she had a reveal. And because she doesn't have a reveal, I have no choice but to give her a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Maya Iman LePage. And for her performance outfit, Maya is coming out in this yellow frilly number paired with some white boots and big poofy Hair. She comes out and I'm thinking to myself, this is kind of a meh outfit. I do like that the outfit has the fringe because as a performance outfit, fringe moves really well. It moves really well. It gives you sort of that like bounce and movement that you sort of need. I don't like that this is paired with a white boot. It's not really giving for me. I wish it was paired with, I don't know, a yellow boot. This looks like your stereotypical performance outfit. Now, she is doing some crazy moves. She's flipping, she's dipping, she's flipping on tables. So she definitely needs an outfit that she can move in. So all in all, she was never gonna have the over the top outfit. Now, here's the thing is that I have seen a version of this outfit done so, so many times. And this doesn't look like a particularly well-made version of that outfit. Immediately, it makes me think to Janie JK, who on UK vs. The World had a frilly outfit as well, but it was fuller, it had several colors going on. It looked a lot more expensive version of this. This definitely feels like the bar version of your outfit. So, eh. Additionally, I find that this the nude illusion against her skin tone is the wrong shade of nude. She's got chocolate skin and she's definitely got a nude illusion for a much lighter person. That should have been dyed or redone. It doesn't feel like it was custom made. It feels like it was purchased separately. Additionally, this color isn't really doing much for me. I wish it was brighter or, and maybe even more metallic. Like imagine this whole thing if it was gold. You know what I mean? Like then with like a gold boot, it would have given you that Studio 54 vibe, you know, then it would have matched with her hair. I think that would have really just like taken it up a notch because obviously she can't have uh, rhinestones and all these details onto it because it would affect her performance. All in all, I'm just like whatever about it. And because I'm whatever about it, I'm just gonna drab it because there's so many more looks coming. <laughs> On the runway, Maya Iman LePage is coming out in this big jacket, 
all covered up and very cold. I was gonna go, come and critique it, but even before I got, even got to look at it, she pulled it off. And I was like, girl, way, way, way too soon. You need to milk that moment. You need to give us that outfit. I didn't even get a chance to critique it before you pulled it off. This makes me think that this queen is probably a very young queen because like if you've been in the bars, you've probably done several reveals. So you know that you need to milk it. You can see that her style of performance is very much oriented around these flips. Honestly, no one else can do so like good for her, but she probably doesn't have a lot of practice with actual like moments of reveal. Cause honestly it was like three seconds. I didn't even get to see the coat. She then reveals to this bathing suit and the bathing suit is good, it's a bathing suit. I mean, whatever. But all in all, she had a coat that she took off and a bathing suit that is a bathing suit. It was nothing special. The only thing cool about it is that they were both made from the same material. This is a reveals runway. I'm looking for unexpected. I'm looking for concept. I'm looking for something unique and this was not. And that is why for Maya Iman LePage's runway outfit, I have to go with a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Plain Jane. And Plain Jane for her performance outfit is walking out looking like a giant hamburger. But this giant hamburger cut out and you're thinking, what the hell is going on? But before we talk about what is going on, let's talk about the hamburger itself. Did you notice it had thousands of rhinestones on it. She goes, if I'm gonna give you a cutout, I'm gonna give you the best cutout in the world. And I love, love, love that. That it goes to show the attention to detail that, that we come to expect from Drag Race. You know what I mean? This is the biggest drag competition in the world. She eventually rips off this hamburger. She rips off this giant burger to reveal the biggest titties wearing this little bodysuit. The bodysuit is all red that matches her red hair and on her chest she got the message Burger Finger which is the name of her song that she is singing. This is how a performance outfit is done. The performance outfit was made for the performance. First of all, the reveal hid these giant titties, which it's hard to hide some giant titties. You know, usually when people do reveals, the thing underneath is usually smaller than the thing on top of it. So the fact that she hid that is fantastic. On top of it, the outfit has the saying on it of her song. So it's called branding, branding, branding. And she's playing with ketchup and mustard. And so while she's wearing all of this red, it all feels sort of coordinated it is the song itself is stupid the message is stupid but stupid in the best drag camp way that we love but more importantly the outfit matches the stupidity of it all and just adds to the performance and adds to the extraness of it it is for all of those reasons that for plain jane uh for her performance outfit i 100 percent have to give her a fab Next up is Plain Jane, and Plain Jane is coming in in this baby blue dress and giving you Ice Queen fantasy. She's paired it with this like crown, and she is definitely giving you a little bit of her heritage with that Russian queen, sort of that little bit of Elsa vibes from Frozen. It is definitely giving you everything. She looks so regal, and the gown looks so expensive. She rips open her dress robe thing to reveal to short shorts and a t-shirt. This was so out of left field and so stupid. The t-shirt is completely made out of sequins and her short shorts are made out of this jean material and on her buttocks say Bean Town. This was so stupid and so unexpected because you are expecting a reveal, but you're usually, the reveals have something to do with each other. And this was like left to right. It went from like Russian oligarchs, really that Russian fantasy to like that everyday Russian bimbo mail order, mail order bride. I loved it. I loved the juxtaposition. I loved that I didn't see this coming. I loved that both looks looked put together and expensive, but like in their own individual way. One looked like what you would expect from Drag Race, while the other one is what you come to love from Drag Race, is where it's people do these stupid things to make them so surreal and fun. This was such a trip, but in the best way. And that is why for Plain Jane's a uh, runway outfit, I 100% have to give her a bow. And that is it for this week's episode. But I know why you mess are here, you mess 
guys are here to find out who had my drab of the week. Well, my drab of the week for the performance outfit has to go to Hershey oh. LaForgette. Girl, I did not get what this outfit had to do with her performance and it just wasn't aiding. All in all, it was kind of meh. And for the runway outfit, I have to give it to Hershey LaForgette. Oh. Girl, you got a double double doozy of the drabs of the week. Honestly, it wasn't much of a reveal and I was expecting so much more. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week for the performance outfit, I have to give it to Plain Jane. Plain Jane came out and gave you a whole concept and it was very well put together with all the pieces. It was so left field and everything looked really well made. Fab of the week for the runway outfit has to go to Nymphia Wind. Yeah. Nymphia Wind gave us three, four reveals, gave you a whole story of this banana, and each individual garment looked really expensive individually. All in all, both of these queens are queens to watch, and I'm really excited to see what they come up with. Y'all, that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with my comments? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do try to read all of them and do reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you next week when we review episode three of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16. So, bye-bye for now.